Uh, yeah, you know what? While we wait for a couple more people, again, these these calls are very like, I feel like very free flow, more free flow than streams or anything else we've done. Like, so, um, yeah, again, expect some. What's the best way to describe it? It's oh. just gonna, it's just gonna be free flow, you know. Holy moly, free flow. Oh, what, what? Hello, you're back. I did. I just. Are you joking? Did I disconnect? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> Literally, we just talk about it and then boop, you roboted and I disappeared. Was, I was, you know what? I've got the recording on my end. So I'm just, oh, nice. So, so you know, you're just for you. Chat away. <laughs> awesome. We it's okay. Listen to that back. It's okay because I've got chat. So if, if things happen, I can respond. You all <laughs> might not hear me. <laughs> I'll just disappear we'll shout yeah it's fine it's fine as a premise we're probably just going to mainly focus on feedback we were going to go into part two stuff we might still go into part two stuff towards the end dependent on how it goes um there's a lot of feedback um right okay so let's just kick things off i think with a quick run through of what we did uh for anyone who's unfamiliar with what we recently done and what we're investigating and stuff so we hot fixed um players not being able to sell back to the forestry shop because we saw that untradables were being easily bought by buying tradable items off the g selling them back to the shop for animal infused bark and then buying funky shape log and bits and pieces like that so we've turned that off for now. We're going to look to re-enable that at some point, but only for untradable items, which will be the forestry outfit and the funky shape logged. The lumberjack outfit won't be part of that because you can also get it in Temple Drekken. Um So you would, and I, from what I know, it's like fairly straightforward to get it, like fairly easy. I might be takes like 25 minutes to get set there yeah there you go so like you know we don't want to have that like consistency coming back in so they won't be be able to be traded back when we do that change um we also stopped uh events spawning inside the woodcutting guild because we said that um that wasn't going to be a thing we stressed that from the beginning of the blog like it, the, the first blog we put out in february um and unfortunately we missed uh <laughs> It's a little bit of code. Um, didn't realise until quite late, so that is big on us. So apologies. Um, as far as I'm aware, they're not going back for at least for the foreseeable future, because um, we want to push intended, like you know, we want to push social interaction outside of the Woodcutting Guild. But you know, and that's that's what the um, content was aimed for. Uh, we also hot fixed um, a couple of things with the events. So we saw that players would be able to like scout events, which, and I'm going to stress here, scouting events is absolutely fine. If you want to scout events, cool. Like from our perspective, like the scouting and the joining in CCs and talking with other people about where a, an event has spawned, that's cool. And it's social interaction and it brings elements of, what exactly we envisioned from this type of content, right? Um, but being able to jump in <laughs> from world to world and right at the end, just get bulk XP, very quick succession was leading to like copious amounts of XP, like being pumped into the, you know, into the player, which probably it's not what we wanted. We wanted the social element, lots of like completely break uh, <laughs> cutting XP matters, you know. Um, so what we did was, if you're not logged into a world and the flower and tree are struggling sapling event spawns, you won't receive the final drop of experience at the end. If you're not logged into the world when the rising roots event spawns, you will receive reduced rewards. And we've also reduced the duration of the flower and tree event and the leprechaun event. Uh, flower and tree event is about a minute uh, and the leprechaun event is over a minute, uh, I believe. So I think that's everything we hot fixed. The other thing I want to cover, and Squid, feel free to jump in 
whenever you like, is obviously a lot of people have seen that getting rewards from events is not very consistent at the moment. And some players playing in the event won't receive those rewards. This is because, if for those of you who were here a bit earlier, uh, Squid, I don't know if you want to refresh why that's the case. Uh, yeah, the way the way it was, uh, the scripts were running before was basically so many people were engaging with events, we were hitting a limit on the server, and it was uh, aborting. So we and crashing people, so we uh, had to put a cap on it to start with. But I am currently working on a fix for that, so hopefully there will be no cap. You'll yeah, be able to get all your rewards at the end. So our priority was making sure that people weren't crashing playing the event because that's really bad for anyone. You know, you take part in the event, you crash, and you don't get anything anyway. Um, so unfortunately, we had to put a cap on it because otherwise the crashing issue would have continued. But like Squid said, hopefully, and we're hoping this comes out in the next game update, which should be next week, that cap will be lifted and the crashing events won't happen which you know that's the intended solution because <laughs> uh, we yeah. didn't we don't we don't want to cap it like you know it's a social event we want you to you know enjoy yourselves um so yeah i feel like that's one of the bigger bits out of the way let me jump over to chat now i've i've got that um yeah so should we i suppose should we just go over some other feedback points squid actually yeah yeah, cool. All right, let's do that then. Let's do that. Let's um, let me grab up my work in progress document that none of you is allowed to see just yet, but <laughs> you will do at some point. It'll be published. Don't worry. Um, right. Let's start with something. You know what? Let's start with something spicy-ish, I suppose. Um, Ultimate Iron players. Uh, I'm gonna sort of like read bits from my. Like document so i can give you guys all the insight um obviously we've seen a massive amount of discussion surrounding all my iron players and i know what players have been saying like all my iron players they chose the game mode they chose to restrict themselves and yes they did we have made it an official game mode but we still want to you know adhere to the principles of uim um, which is why we didn't poll the option for the Freaky Forester to note logs, because that would then change a lot of things. Um, so what we're planning to do is, because essentially what we did, we changed the prices after the beta news post went out, didn't effectively communicate it unless you weren't in, unless you were in this call or saw the live stream, which again, is only a very small handful of the player base you probably wouldn't have known about that. And again, if you stack being a UIM on top of that and preparation, very, very likely that you as a UIM player prepping for forestry did not see that they were going to be changed. That's a mistake on us. We totally owned up to it. Like there's no, there's no skirting around that. Um, the shop rewards we feel are in a good place. The number of logs you're putting in are in a great place. Obviously for UIM, very very difficult even for like redwood logs and stuff like that so what we want to do instead um is place uh, it, the original intent was to use the sort of air hot air balloon system log storage facility uh and put something similar like that next to the friendly forester which will allow you to one way deposit logs you wouldn't be able to take them back out you wouldn't be able to note them from there you just put logs in there and they would automatically automatically be able to be used in the shop. And I think squid, you said we're not doing the, um, little basket thing anymore. We're doing it on the forester. Um, we're, it's in, it's a work in progress at the moment. We were yeah. talking about just doing it on the forester. Yeah. yeah. But, but basically there will be some option to do that. Um, which hopefully means that your IMs can at least do it in, um, you know, increments. They can come in increments. So it'll still be work, you know, you still have to go out your way and get the resources and stuff yourself and bring them all the way back to the Forester. But at least you've got the option now to use normal um, logs as well as noted logs. Um, that's the intention anyway. 
I can't say for certain if it's going to be next game update or the game update after that, but there is, it, it's, we're aware, <laughs> we're aware, which is again, another frustration of why I haven't been able to get this like updated news post out because I feel like a lot of the things we're going to go over here would have been in here and would have been seen by a, a, the wider player base, which, you know, it's just a shame with everything going on at the moment. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add to that squid? Um, no, I think you covered it pretty well. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go to the next bit of feedback then. Let's go to collection log. Um, yeah, this is something we saw a lot of players just ask why it wasn't included. Um, probably, I would say, a bit of oversight from us, Squid. Um, um, yeah, maybe a bit of oversight, a bit of like... Um underestimating how much people wanted it in the log and also there was a lot of stuff to do for a small amount of time so <laughs> it would kind of got pushed to the side yeah how bad yeah exactly so the plan is to give you a collection log um which will retroactively unlock any untradables you get the only downside is any tradables um that you've already brought you'd have to rebuy in order to get them um which is unfortunately just like a side effect of us like the oversight so there will be a collection log and your untradable should be retroactively unlocked with it um i think i'm trying to remember off the top of my head which is probably not a good idea what the <laughs> most expensive item tradable item is and i think it's the log no clothes pouch probably i think it's the close pouch um so yeah, i think so yeah i i mean i can only apologize for like missing over the collection log stuff um i'm glad at least we can like retroactively unlock the untradable stuff but yeah maybe maybe in the future but like especially with the amount of time we've got to make changes and feedback and stuff like i don't know if we're going to be able to like get to a point where can we can retroactively unlock tradable unless you disagree squid but i, I think no that's... that's uh we don't as far as i know we don't know where you got it at like by default so and we won't be able to do it for forestry yeah um which category will the forestry collection will glow in go in um that's a good question i haven't thought about that <laughs> um uh i don't know some another dev is working on it yeah, that, I'm not sure what they've decided to do. That will, yeah. It, the the fact is, it will be there. Like again, we've been thinking more top level, <laughs> top level things at the moment, and like you know, fortunately, like there's a there's a few devs on other teams that have come over to help us out, which has been really really handy. Um, and like you know, can only thank them so much. Um, so yeah, there will be a collection log basically. Um, right, next one. Um, what do you want to go for, Squid? Should we talk about accessibility or forestry kit depositing or cannons? I'll let you pick which we talk about next. I'll start with, start with cannons. I saw that one in questions for stages. Quite voted. All right. Um, yeah. 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 I'll go for it, Squid. If you got something ready, sure. go for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say, yeah, we're aware of the cannons issue and like fires and stuff like that. Um, we've got a plan fix in mind, um, and probably won't be out. I'm not sure. Probably won't be out for next week though. Um, but we're just going to look at making events. Um, I think we were talking about making events, remove cannons and fires in the area, in the event area. Yeah, from what I remember from the conversation, and I'm, well, again, I wanted to double check before we release this, is that fires and flowers would be removed when an event spawns. And box traps, that's a good one to add on. Thank you, Semper Sage. Um, mm -hmm. Should be removed, and cannons will auto-degrade. Um, so anyone that is trying to grief, they will degrade and they will have to go and get it from um i can't remember the npc's name so they won't have to buy it back they'll just have to get a new one so 
Um, hopefully that will help um, and hopefully we see a fall in the sort of griefing we see because I know right now and we're probably just going to like automatically flow into accessibility and visibility issues but right now that's a big concern especially for those players that don't have the you know values of something like entity hider where they can make use of it um, and not have to worry about that um, so we want to just make sure that we're doing as much as possible that the griefing is restricted um, yeah flowers is on there don't worry some stage flowers is on there flowers fires box traps removed auto decay cannons um yeah hopefully in the next two weeks i can't again we can't guarantee it just yet but that's the that's the plan right squid yeah there's a couple of comments about can we just remove the ability to interact with other people's cannons um it's not that's not the issue the issue is that it blocks the tile so if you block enough tiles around a tree events can't spawn because there aren't free tiles to spawn stuff like roots in that's the problem yeah so i know i know the interaction with cannons bit is like a separate issue in itself but that's a bigger that's a bigger fix i think squid if i'm correct with what sorry like removing the ability to interact and i quote oh mark, yeah that, that ain't gonna be a, an easy thing <laughs> um so yeah we just want to make like uh again because we've only got like a very short space of time right now to try and address the very immediate feedback we want to make sure we're doing as much as as much impactful changes as possible that make it best for everybody um so yeah that's what we do and just touching on the accessibility aspect and visibility because i know mobile was another big thing where it becomes very difficult to play events on it because of all the people Obviously, that should reduce in time. That doesn't fix anything in the now. Um, but especially, I know the flower and tree event was a big concern from players. And I'll caveat this saying, like, we know we've seen the feedback that the flower and tree event is probably the most underwhelming from your feedback in terms of the... Um, events you actively interact with like i'm excluding the leprechaun in that because from your feedback you see a more of a utility than an actual event um which we'll come back to anyway but part of the reason the flower and tree is is difficult because there's so many people all the bushes look the same so finding the two pairs makes it very difficult and you know especially on mobile or those with visibility issues um keeping track of those can be very difficult um so what we've discussed, and again, this is not going to be an immediate fix because it needs our time, um, but we want to sort of, and Squid, please correct me if I'm wrong, we want to sort of pair up the, um, the bushes to be coloured together. So, like, for example, there will be two purple flowers. No, they won't be, they won't be oh, paired. They won't be paired. The point is to find the pets. The, what we're planning to do is make each bush a unique color. So there you could go. say like, oh, red and yellow. And that's the pair. There we go. Um, yeah. Yeah, red and yellow. So yeah, at least that'll be a bit more easier than this one over here. And then being like, well, which one is this one? Because you're next to three different ones. Um, oh. Which, you know, <laughs> yeah, the call outs think because like, you know, Vera, to your point, the call outs section of the a struggling sapling thing is like one of the best social bits i think we've seen across the game um like the update um again feel free to disagree with me squid but i just love seeing um all of that like squid was talking about the abbreviations earlier and it's really cool mm -hmm. yeah i've seen people do the saplings being awesome that was definitely my favorite event during development yeah yeah Exactly. Everyone pogging off <laughs> with the roots as well. Yeah. Seeing the, the wavy green colored roots text uh, is always quite fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that will be sort of like hopefully make it easier. The colorblind ones, uh, I've just the, seen something about the colorblind. bushes will have they'll have unique names. So like orange bush, yellow bush. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not sure. I might be able to change like shapes and stuff like that at the moment. Yeah, so for I'm not now, sure. yeah, so we just have to do text. Yeah, so at least that's something that, like, you know, if you write, even if you're right clicking with every, 
even with like if the visibility issues still persist at least you'll be able to right click on like a group and see that on that tile it is a you know red bush or a yellow bush just from the right click op which will be mm-hmm. nice um so yeah it's uh we we are aware of the visibility issues there's some other things we've been talking about i can't go into it yet but like we're aware that you know the amount of players that are in one place and stuff like random events spawning at the same time as normal like the forestry events and other bits and pieces like there's a lot going on on the screen all at once so we're aware this is the only bit i can talk about right now but there's you know there might be some other bits we're planning in the future but a lot of it does take art time um which again is is quite oh, it's quite delicate with time at the moment because of all the stuff we're working on which i can't talk about so um cool all right on that point then uh forestry kit upgrade um so i know that we've also seen um feedback around the upgraded forestry kit and not being able to deposit easily enough um f- f- with it um which makes it feel a bit like not that great um i know that's the like sort of similar issue with a wearable fishing barrel as well um so i mean we've got i feel like we had a call earlier today just before this actually and there's like some options i don't know if you want to go over the different bits squid but um yeah one of the things we were talking about in the long term was adding a button to the bank to deposit all your containers um but that's not going to happen soon the for the baskets specifically so right now if anyone doesn't know, if it's in your inventory you can right click you and that will empty into your inventory wait does it do inventory or bank i can't remember one of the two um the basket is the problem is it's on your back um yeah we think we're talking about making it deposit from a deposit box if it's on your back stuff like that the uh the ui with the bank is um an interesting challenge not an easy thing like some of these things like that sounds so simple nope um <laughs> blame spaghetti so, code <laughs> yeah there was yeah we can't add any more bank ops either like you say oh add, add another right click up can't do that um so we are quite limited to what we can do well i can't remember we've had so many discussions today what did we come up with in the end i think the call we said uh in the call we just had it was and again this is very early stages and the idea just came from the call but it was make the um forestry kit more like the plank sack rather than the fishing barrel because i think the biggest thing with the fishing barrel is like the utility of it because it's food in there automatically gains a benefit that you can bring a lot of food with you and i know it's uncooked because it's it's you know but you, you could still cook it and utilize it where logs not as useful as um as fish so being able to do it like the plank sack might be a better alternative because you know again it might spice things up as well with just like how it works so um, oh yeah that's if you're out and about yeah yeah of course but it still makes it uh, i mean i'm not sure how the i can't remember how the plank sack works in bank stuff and i know it also means inventory and stuff like that so that's a whole separate issue that it's something basically it's something we're aware of the bank button i will say if we're doing it we have to poll it because it's something that is not just affecting forestry as an easy fix it's going to affect more things and we need to make sure we've got the okay from you all like even if it seems like from an early perspective that something is like yes the players want it the players really really want it we need to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and putting it for a poll because otherwise if it turns out that it's detrimental in some way not saying this is then it means that you know we haven't done the right thing and asked you first so all right let's go on to i'll tell you what let's go over some events polish all right so this is i've sort of collated like a little like hit list i suppose of what i think from all the community feedback and i was jumping in game on wednesday and and stuff like that as well how you all feel about each event so please in the chat tell me if i'm wrong because i want to know if i'm wrong because if i've been going in the wrong direction that's not great and i've not done my job properly otherwise 
Um, right, so rising rooks. My original notes, I put just bis and roots in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like roots with an exclamation mark. Um, I put low intensity, great experience, great wards, decent social interaction. Because the only thing that you know, I, you know what? I would maybe ch- swap decent and put it up because even though there's not anything like it's not as intensive as something like struggling sapling. I do like all of the roots stuff, just like people shouting roots, which is really cool. Uh, and it, I suppose it is really social and good. So, you know what? Maybe I'll change decent to great. It, it's kind of, it's funny because the root is literally just trees. You're just woodcutting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it moves around a bit, but you're just woodcutting. So it's and funny you... that that's like, oh yeah, roots is the best because it's just kind of more of the same. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think like... It's interesting. And again, I'm... Please, I'm talking to anyone in chat, please tell me if I'm wrong, but like, as a player, if something is extremely easy, like in terms of intensity, and you're getting like amazing experience, amazing rewards from it, of course you're going to like it. Like, you're not thinking about the balancing at that point. You're thinking, this is, this is amazing. I want it. Why would we change mm-hmm. this? True that. So, and, and totally understand, player Sarni is right there with you. Roots <laughs> Roots is bis. All right? Roots is bis and roots should stay, okay? I'm just like I want to put it out there and make sure that in terms of balancing we need to make sure that if you know and I'll go on to flower in tree in a little bit, but that is one that's obviously not as favored as some of the other ones, so we need to make sure that everything gets its due diligence. Um not being confirmed now because we we need to have more discussions about making sure that we know exactly what we're doing because we want to make sure that it's in it. The, the content as a whole is in a really good place. Struggling sapling, high intensity, great experience, good rewards, great social interaction, like probably the best social interaction because of how much you need to work together as a, as a team. So like fantastic. Like I think sapling is, is pretty, pretty good. And then we go to the flower and tree, which for those of you is the B event, high intensity, not great experience, not great rewards, decent social interaction. That's probably the weakest out of the three. And then we've got the leprechaun, which is low intensity. And I've changed it for this bit. Low intensity, great utility, not considered an event. It is an event in the sense of like, it's in the list of events. But if you compare it to everything else, it's like a utility bit, not not on a quote unquote event, you know. I'll start with a leprechaun first and squid again, as always. Unless you want to take it, squid, you know, I feel like I've been rambling on and <laughs> I'm on the edge of disconnecting at any moment. So what maybe you should take how exciting. <laughs> take this. <laughs> um well so leprechaun first. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um yeah. I my what I want to do with leprechaun is make uh, some gameplay in it as well. So he's like Asks you to do something to help him out with something. So it is an event as well that gives rewards. But he'll also bank for you. Um, give it some utility. I know people are saying, well, just make it not block other events. I think it'd be more interesting if it did something cool and you could actually play with it. Obviously, on that note, just about in, and this is something for the players to bear in mind, is that if we did make changes to Leprechaun event to make it an actual quote-unquote event, then that would take a lot more development time than it would to potentially oh, yeah. stop, you know, events from well continue letting events spawn after it's spawned basically so back to back leprechaun <laughs> back to back leprechaun <laughs> just just four leprechauns, Two leprechauns. Just yeah. chilling around <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> the yeah i'm not sure there's anything else to add with that i've saw some people saying like oh can it bank business and stuff if you have the charm he will bank anything if you don't have the charm it's just logs uh, except for a few that were missed, <laughs> like Arctic Pines. Yeah, and uh, Teak Mahogany, Arctic Mahogany Pines, and, and yeah, Bl- Blisterwoods. Is that the other one? Yeah, I think. Yeah, so. I think I think I wrote it down somewhere. I know I, I've got the list somewhere. <laughs> we're aware. We're aware that those. Yeah, it's Blisterwoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, he does bank your log basket though. So if you put all those in your log basket, you'll bank this. You'll bank them from there. But yeah, my my preferred solution would be to make it. A, a cool event as well that does something interesting rather than having some events that are sort of non-blocking and that gets a bit more complicated we call it just to make it interesting do you want to touch on the other three squid yeah and the, like what we're, firing what we're tree. thinking about yeah yeah so firing tree yeah weak rewards so as people pointed out 
there is an issue at the moment where we had to cap the amount of people that get rewards that is getting fixed as we speak. Um, so you should get your rewards again, which will make that a bit better. We're also looking to make the each bush a different color so that you can call out which colors are active. It is probably the weakest event, I would agree. I think the colors will help, at least once once you've all found which one's active, you can say, oh, yellow, red, um, for example. You can run between those. And obviously, it's easier with the, you spread out as a group, find the bushes, and then run back and forward. It's a, just a, it's a less thinking. A bit more just work together to try and find it. I think it feels bad for players as well, especially because it is at that point, it's because it needs an item, right? I feel like that's the other the other thing that makes it like, oh, damn. Like, I know you only need yeah. one person to have it technically, but, you know, when you, you still spawn it, you still need to work for that item. And then you're like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, hopefully with the rewards and stuff, it should feel it should feel a little less wasted at least. So yeah, the 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 majority of the XP from the uh, flowering tree is set up to come from the end, so that's not going to be helping things. Um, do we want to touch upon struggling sapling and rising roots? Uh, sapling, I think this is in a pretty good spot. I know some of the things are a bit hard to see when there's so many players on the on those on the ground, um, and I know we've got some issues with people being able to just like scout out saplings and get the drop at the end uh we're looking into fixes for that so that you'd be better off staying for the whole event if you want the full amount of xp like staying there since the start rather than coming at the end and just popping some mulch in yeah i don't know if you have anything to add there no i think that's it i think like you know we saw <laughs> we saw a video earlier that was like someone uh i think it was like mining having like people scout in across the same world they were in and then just like yeah as soon as someone had found uh, the sapling they would hop get like bulk of xp and then coming back and the xp per hour like was quite interesting to say the least just for mm -hmm. what they were doing so yeah um the yeah the bark is the worst worst one to see on that one we were talking about making it just a bit taller so you can actually like a pile of back, make it a bit easier to see, maybe make it a bit brighter. The the XP um at the end. Right. So the sapling has a timer bar. That's why it's a bit different to the other ones. Because of the timer. Um, it's not a case of put all the XP on your interaction because then you just want to drag out the event. And that's not the idea. Um, but that's why there's a bit more tweaking to be done on that one. The bushes. Like it does give you at the end, but it is based on your contribution. So it does track how many bushes you've helped through and do it there. But there's some potentially some adjustments we can do. We'll see how it is once everyone's getting their rewards. Um, we kind of want people to stick around. That's kind of the idea. Let's we'll continue monitoring that for sure. Nothing is ever simple, Parker. Nothing is ever simple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rising roots, yeah. As we said, it's chop chop. Get your rewards. It's good because. Uh, you just do, you chop the thing, you get the reward. There's no ambiguity, there's no waiting. Easy. Yeah. I like, think it's nice to have a mix, to be honest. I but think so. I think so. Once yeah. everyone gets their rewards, that'll be a bit better. Yeah. This is not confirming or denying. I just want to set the precedence just in case because of balancing. There might be slight tweaks to rising roots. All right. We, I don't think we want to take away from how cool of an event it is. But again, going back to the point of being a player but i could i know i'm i'm You're the, being booed the chat i can see it you know what you know what's even worse i've got the chat on two screens so i've got two both my eyes the corner of both my eyes i've uh i've got <laughs> i've got booing code at me um <laughs> i just want to put it out there again i don't want to i'm not i can't say we're gonna or we're, we're not gonna because it's it's it would be wrong of me balancing with other events and what we've seen over the last couple of days we need to always be prepared to make potential balancing changes, even if it's for something that's like extremely loved, like the rising roots. Like it's unfortunately, it's a part of us being devs that we just need to think about. Um, and yeah. bit, you know, it's again, player me doesn't want it. I'm right there. I'm booing myself. Okay, guys. <laughs> and again, this is no promises, but I don't think it will change. If we do make changes, I don't think it will change that much potentially. Yeah. So the thing, yeah. So the thing is, because right now the 
XP per hour for doing forestry events it's potentially looking a bit lower because some of the you're not getting rewarded for some of them, right? So when they all when those other ones go up and the average goes up, and then we might need to bring that down a bit across all the events. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. I feel like when Wednesday comes next game update, uh, we will see a clearer picture of how the events are faring. Like we've got a pretty good like idea of the state they're in right now. Once we get to Wednesday then we can really see if that's like, you know, uh, we're already in the right ballpark of what our, our thinking is for these events and stuff. Um, so hopefully you um, you guys can appreciate. <laughs> like, I will say, I don't think we're far off. Uh, yeah, I don't think agreed. Far off. Agreed. I don't think we're far off. I just want to set the precedence and pe- for people to be aware and, and prepared. Like, not that it's definitely happening, definitely not happening, just please take in mind we need to consider balancing when we're doing stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Screenview, Screenview's got a point. Like this is this is a very good point. There are more avenues for balance than just XP, right? Just because mm-hmm. I say balancing, it doesn't mean that we're just going to instantly nerf XP. So, oh yeah, that that's not the case. It's, and that's never the case. All right. When we talk about balancing, you have to look at the the wider picture. Otherwise, you're not balancing it, right? Yeah, cool. we're looking at it holistically, not just slamming down XP rates. Yeah, yeah. The XP drop's not going to be fixed until Wednesday, then. Yeah, unfortunately not, V. Like, basically, this is to give you a little insight on how, you know, we're working as a team. Because we were f- prioritizing the crashing when doing events, hopefully you can all still hear me. Yep. Um, we're, we're prioritizing stopping people's games from crashing during the events. That's a bigger issue for us overall because it's literally causing players to s- instantly stop playing the game, which... Is never fun. You know, you do an event and your game crashes and you're like, oh, what the hell? You do it again, maybe it crashes again. Oh, and then you know, you're just you're just you're just frustrated at that point. And that's that's never a good experience. Obviously the reward thing is similar. It's not a great experience when you're not getting rewards and other people are, but that fix was not as simple and would have needed a cold fix, which is what we've spent the last couple of days discussing amongst the team. Is it worth have we got enough to warrant a cold fix and bringing the game down? Because the other thing you've got to think about, especially when you're cold fixing, is if something then goes wrong because we've cold fixed, then that's more issues we've got to deal with and more time that you guys are not spending enjoying the game because something's happened, right? So every time we cold fix, it's a big risk in terms of like your enjoyment. And we didn't want to, you know, we've just been weighing up the options basically of like, is, is there enough to warrant the cold fix? And right now, especially with how late it is, we've been in, like, Squid can probably tell you more, but there's been conversations since Wednesday at 12 when the game update launched. We've been having conversations pretty much all day, every day since that point. Yeah, it's been pretty busy. Pretty yeah. nonstop. Oh, yeah. You know what? The chat's got a really good point. To, to preface, for those who, people who are listening afterwards or, you know, can't see the chat, Hot fixing is something we can do while the game is up and we can basically fix things live so the game doesn't come down. Whereas a cold fix, we need to bring the game offline in order to implement the changes we've done because of you know various coding engine things. That's why it's always important for us to try and avoid cold fixing as much as possible unless it isn't like entirely crucial to do so. And right now, at the moment, the events are still working like as interactions intended so you can still enjoy the events you might not get the rewards at the end all the time but you'll get an experience throughout and you can still do woodcut in like a lot of the things are still there and still working so it was like always a yeah always a trade-off when we're talking about cold fixing so yeah i'm sorry for those that have got to wait uh you know until wednesday and i'm one of them because i've been you know doing (laughs) We're we're gonna start doing forestry properly. Me and my wife on our group Iron Man this uh this weekend. So even I'll be <laughs> I'll be right there with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sucks. It sucked. Um, I was kicking myself when it happened. Just didn't didn't really think about the limits that we were gonna hit. It's, it's um, you know you know what because we're because we've been completely candid and I like this is why I like this format a lot. It's it's really difficult, especially and I know we see a lot of statements about like oh where's all the qa work and where's all of this and like especially with this update the beta was obviously a big thing for us and we were so excited to have that out 
and unfortunately, and this was not because, and I'll stress this, this was not because of forestry, that the beta didn't go live. There was technical issues, unforeseen, that made the beta impossible to launch. Like there was no way it was going to go out. None, none of that, even with, you know, the beta is obviously a good, a good point to make with this. But even if we had <laughs> hundreds of QAs, like I'm talking like hundreds and thousands, of, like hundreds, maybe not thousands. I don't think any gaming company has thousands. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's never, ever going to compare to your player base ever. When you've got so many different people playing the game all at once in so many different ways, you're always going to encounter problems that you're never going to see when you're testing either as QA or whatever. So that's why something like this, I know Squids, you said you kicked yourself, but like, there was no way we were going to know unless we had like, oh yeah, we had, you it's... know, we had the beta or something, you know? So, <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were just as gutted as you guys and you didn't get the beta, don't worry. Yeah. Um, tr tr trust us. <laughs> trust us. Yeah. I was just seeing like what we spoke about what, what the cause is earlier, Parker. Um, it's nothing to do with what your state is at the end. It's just a random, there's a cap on how many people can get the rewards at the end and it will just randomly come from the people that were doing the event um, just to try and bring the limit down. Um, yes, we do have a fix. We can't help fix it, which is why it's got to go out in the next game update. Yeah, to, to S's point, I feel like, and Squid, again, I, th I feel like I can speak on behalf of the project as a whole. There have been a lot of learnings mm -hmm. like across the board, and I don't just mean like from dev or content developers perspective, from a CM perspective, from QA perspective, I think across the whole team part one has been a big learning point it, like personally especially for me it's, i've worked on like a, quite a few big projects across my nearly three years here this is definitely one of the ones i've taken away like more learning from than a lot of the others i think yeah it's it's quite yeah it's kind of different to a lot of the ones we do because so many of them are kind of solo focused mm -hmm. you just do it on your own yeah. this is quite a bit different in that we've changed the entire system of how trees work and made a system that works for effectively unlimited amounts of people well that was the intention um so yeah it's definitely a lot of learning on our part yeah so hopefully that gives you some insight i hope um let's just jump into then after i feel like we've covered everything events wise and then went on a tangent of <laughs> testing and cold fix hot fix and stuff you know what let's go i'm just going to go over some smaller changes that we talked about in our so for reference to everyone we normally do game updates on wednesday and then on a thursday morning we all meet up for a big discussion uh and feedback exchange for the update and that's where we decide like you know do we need to balance this do we need to change that do we need to fix this is there any ongoing issues is there any problems with the issues that we fixed etc um Oh, have I gone to MIA again? No. Oh, okay. So, Sarah, you scared me. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> my heart, my heart. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we meet up and we all, like, you know, discuss the game update and stuff. And I think what I love about the team is that it's never animosity in those calls. It's always from a point of understanding. Even if someone's, like, adamantly disagree, you are, like they've got like fair points and everyone always is hearing each other out because I think we're all so passionate and stuff. So there's a couple of smaller changes we want to look at. Uh, one of them was allowing the woodcutting skill cape to be used. So I think the original feedback point was like, let us combine it with the forestry kit so we can get the, the bird's nest bonus. We think we're going to do, um, and again, Squid, correct me if I'm wrong, is... Uh, allow you to put the wood cutting skill cape this wouldn't include the max cape it's just the wood cutting skill cape into the closed pouch and then you could get the benefits from the bird houses yeah but, that was a uh, last train of thought because yeah we we just want you to be able to you know have that benefit if you if you could put the max cape in the closed pouch that'd be that'd be insane yeah i think it makes sense to, to be the wood cutting cape yeah yeah exactly um Cool. So one of the other things, like the Arctic Pine issue we saw beforehand about, uh, you know, not having an efficient way for Arctic Pine logs was putting them on trolls. And I know it doesn't address UIM skillers in particular because they can't do that content. But just on that point, we noticed that not all of the trolls on that place give you rolls for Arctic Pine logs. I think some of them only give you bones. So we're exploring how to make that a bit better. 
there's been light discussion about adding a skilling method uh, outside of I mean it shouldn't it shouldn't matter as much now with the depositing changes we want to make so hopefully that'll fix it but yeah we we're, we're still going to monitor the situation basically uh another one is making the forestry kit free for those of you who read the early blogs um we were initially going to try and do a quest to get you like the lowdown on everything forestry i can i mean squid is it it's probably okay for me to say right i imagine <laughs> i'm not the authority of that you know i'll, I'll do I it guess. and if i get if i get if, you know i forget uh stuff thrown at me it's fine the quest <laughs> is probably not coming like to be honest the quest is not happening it's definitely not happening anytime soon and if it happens in part two it kind of feels a bit redundant at that point because for she's already been out for you know a few months or whatever yeah um, we can do more cool stuff if we don't do the quest right so we'll, exactly. that's how we'll sell it exactly i think that's what we when we was in that call we were like it might have even be me that said like no <laughs> bun the quest off because then we can do more stuff um so instead what we're going to do because originally the quest was going to give you a forestry kit so you could do forestry and if you needed a replacement you buy one we're going to try and make the forestry kit free so you can just get a forestry kit again and i know 120 coins isn't a big issue but it's just a nice little quality of life improvement uh i can't remember if we're doing a right click op on the friendly forest or whatever but you know refund me my 120 gp no tony no <laughs> it's not happening sorry just imagine it as forester's tax <laughs> <laughs> Forester's tax. There you go. I wonder how much we actually uh, <laughs> what got the... sunk from that. <laughs> you know what? Well, that's those kits. You know what? We could maybe we could probably figure that out. You know how many forestry kits exist in the game? One hundred twenty GP each. You know. You know. I'm just saying we could uh, we could we could figure that out. I'm in, I'm curious about that. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up next week. <laughs> so obviously it's a Friday now for us, and it's uh, this is this is literally the last thing with me and Squid are doing. Uh, today so um okay so the other thing is and uh we are going to include a australian world for forestry so all you uh people down under will have your own forestry world we've already identified one yeah should be able to make it happen so hopefully that's a good thing more forestry focused worlds and then hopefully over time we can you can all spread out across all the worlds and have a good time with forestry and then the other one, which is like another minor one, we were investigating changing how the chat messages you receive come out because they are quite... Uh, some players are seeing them as a bit spammy at the moment, so there's investigations going into like potentially tweaking that. Squid, I don't know if there's anything else. Just clarify that forestry events spawn on any world, not just forestry worlds. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, very good point. Thank you everyone for enjoying it and engaging with it. Feedback's been awesome. Super awesome to see all like Sears Village active again. Love it. Yeah. Um, it's like honestly, no matter how many like feedback points we've been going through these last couple of days, it does bring a massive smile to my face seeing all the people just like running around like pro not even not even old school RuneScape, like two thousand and four or five RuneScape, you know. Um, yeah. All the events have the same chance as well. Oh, oh, um squid just yep. something in the chat it's quite interesting free to play forestry world oh that's a good question yeah that's a good point do we have free if there are free free to play worlds we, available then yes we will we ask mod rock on monday yes we can include one can't guarantee it because we need to check if we have an available world and stuff like that and it will probably only be one world so like one region so yes please Bear that in mind. I know I said at the start we we're going to get around to a couple of questions, but like <laughs> we answered some of them. We some of those some were of ones we talked about. Yeah, there is a lot in there. Holy moly! Oh, have, um, uh, oh okay. I suppose we can the do super high up one. We've already talked about XP. We, can you get Beaver Vet Pet from Forest Events? Uh, no, there's no role for it. At the moment. But yeah. I mean, we, we we did speak about maybe a pet with some other events that we might consider for part two. So uh, just you know, not confirming, not confirming. Just uh, just put now there. Can you add Arctic Pine Trees to Relica? Uh, I can bring it up with the team. Um, I think, Squid, this might be a good one to touch upon, actually, because uh -huh. I think we might have briefly touched upon it at the start, but I can't remember now because it's uh, the whole day's been 
I think one big blur at them <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, the Woodcutting Guild is losing its favor. Any plans to adjust it to fit with forestry? The Woodcutting Guild's losing its flavor. I guess it says, it says favor. It's a, it's a, but I'm guessing oh, favor. Like, yeah. Huh? I'm guessing it's. I think I'm guessing that's like how good it is. Yeah. 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 Um, I say delete that place. <laughs> <laughs> it's my opinion. I hate that place. Um, um, I don't think it adds anything meaningful to gameplay. I think it takes people out of the world. I don't think it was a good update. I don't think people should be the place where you cut trees. That's my opinion. That's why forestry is in the outside world. If you want to just chill, cut trees with the plus seven, go to the guild. If you don't, then uh, go do forestry in Sears. I, I think the, for the people saying rip woodcutting guild, like, I understand, and it's probably going to be a bit more prevalent now because forestry is new, but you've still got to remember there are a lot of advantages to the woodcutting guild as a area anyway you get a, a plus seven boost without the need for other people there um you've got redwoods there you've got a sawmill there you've got a bank you've got tons of different types of trees in there yeah it's so good it's already. a really good area for just wood cutting in general so just because you don't get events there doesn't necessarily make it bad i know the events are really cool but it's exactly why we wanted to push players to the outside world and have events to sort of everywhere because I think Squid might have said it in a Q&A in past or in a video, but, you know, the whole idea is, like, to run around the world, see, if you know, forestry events going on and being like, oh, yo, what's that? I'm going to jump in. Boom. With the Woodcutting Guild, it's all siloed. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea in general of like that was yeah a good rounded way of saying it. <laughs> I don't like the idea in general of making one spot that's like in an enclosed little area the de facto place to go for a skill. the The beauty of RuneScape is that so much stuff is spread out across the game in mixed high levels and low levels and different types of content. The Woodcutting Guild is just trees, one spot. I, I think it's kind of goes against the principles of RuneScape. So I think we should encourage stuff outside of that. Um, it's already good, as Sunny was saying. Um, if you just want to chop trees and get the XP there, so and also redwoods. So. Yeah, because remember, this is just an expansion to woodcutting, and I know a lot of people will argue, yes, it is essentially changing the skill, which is a fair point. But you can still do generic woodcutting, like you know the classic style of woodcutting in the guild, if you want, and probably the best place to do it, I imagine. Um, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but like the wood kind of guild in itself, maybe there's things we can do in the future that are, that change it, um, improve it a little bit, but I don't want to get to a point where it becomes like the go-to again for just ever. Like, I still feel like you should have that opportunity. Like the wood kind of guild should give you new and exciting, different options to do the skill, but you still got forestry at the same time. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm going to address this point because i've just seen it come up redwoods are less afk than before i'm gonna <laughs> okay so i'm gonna go it buckle up no i no, i'm not i'm not gonna go on a... <laughs> <laughs> there was the, the wind up there i was like <laughs> i've got to remember where i coming. am i've got to remember where i am <laughs> um no basically redwoods like you know what aggression said it perfectly which is ironic considering how i was amping up um <laughs> Redwoods have become more predictable, which is the beauty of it. All right. So your AFKness is more consistent than ever. And I know that some people really enjoyed the fact that sometimes in, you know, cutting redwoods, you can go for like 20 minutes or some like, I don't think 20 minutes, maybe I've, I've, I've pushed that way too far, but you know, there was like, sometimes you go for ridiculously long, but then other times you go for like, 15 20 seconds and then ah, oh, now i need to chop again that for afk especially from a personal opinion feels really bad i would rather a completely consistent method that i know in exactly you know this amount of time i know i'm going to be stopping so i can go and have my focus elsewhere do anything else and then i know in that you know set a timer for four minutes and what is it 20 20 odd there's seconds some, i think there's a little variance yeah but it's around a bit yeah, set a timer for that. You're good. Do do whatever you want for four and four and a bit minutes. You know, you're cool. You don't have to worry about coming back and being logged out because you're, you know, you unfortunately got like a thirty second redwood. Like right? that feels bad. Also, but, someone else can chop the same bit as you. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, 
exactly. So, and yeah, so I, I, I personally feel like, and I'll probably hold my ground on this, like if other, you know, if the wider player base feels differently and other JMOS feel differently, it's fine. But I feel like it's better consistency overall, you know? I agree. Yeah, trees being shareable is good. It's nice. Yep. Right. Okay. I think we're going to call it here. I'm going to just apologize for not getting this update out in time. Sorry we didn't get to answer loads of your questions. And I'm sorry. I feel like I'm saying sorry a lot, but I feel like <laughs> it's been pretty good overall. Well, it's pretty, pretty good. I'm sorry there's been some issues, but I feel like we're doing our utmost finest to address as much as possible. It's just been a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of talking and stuff. So I have to be sorry. I'm a CM. That's my job. Like I was saying yesterday, like as much as you're the voice and we're the megaphone, sometimes, you know, we need to turn it around and be the voice for the the team and say, sorry, guys. <laughs> I think it's been pretty good overall. I think yeah, so. There are some teething issues. There are some bits that maybe didn't get as polished as we would have liked. Um, but hey, we'll try our best, try to fix all the stuff and we'll try and make more cool stuff for part two. Yeah, so just just as a quick summary, like we are aware of many issues, including uh, balancing, polishing events, uh, event rewards and inconsistency, which will be fixed on Wednesday, will be fixed on Wednesday. Uh, collection log, collection log will be coming. Forestry kit um, depositing issues, we are aware, we're investigating. Uh, cannon fires and all that other type of griefing. We're very aware and we're hoping to fix it in the next two weeks. Accessibility and visibility issues, they're on our radar. They might take a little bit more time because they are, they need art to make the changes happen. Um, UIM stuff, you'll be able to deposit your logs but not take them back out um, in some form. Uh, so we're not diminishing the game mode but we're at least giving you an option to do that. And then there's a couple of smaller changes that we're exploring as well. I think I've covered everything. Sounds about it. Yeah. Sweet. I think so. All right. Nice. Uh, part two stuff is coming very soon. Obviously, with all the stuff that's happened this week, uh, it's taken up <laughs> time that I wanted to explore part two and get things ready. Uh, so me and Squid are probably going to be very busy next week as well. I'm hoping I can still get it out for next week. Don't hold me to that, though. I know Aiza will want to hold me to that, but I know there's been a lot of things going on. So hopefully... Hopefully. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and thank you for playing, guys. Like, honestly, it's been really, really, really fun to watch. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Um, you're free to go. Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We should go chill. Yeah. Just <laughs> sleep for the weekend. Yeah. Let's do it all again on Monday. Exactly. Exactly. Appreciate you all for being here. Probably trying to advertise these a bit more in the future because I know this. Th these have been a very last minute. So, and... Uh, shout out to all the Discord mods, by the way, just for being massive helps and just huge legends. So thank you. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll see you around. Bye. Bye-bye.